We are back bringing you game three of this series between Snake Esports and JD Gaming. One game apiece right now as we head into the deciding game. So this is it, the last game of the best of three, Snake versus JDG. And yet again, we're gonna see five mid lane bans come out from uh, JDG and Snake. And first pick mid lane yet again, but this time it's gonna be Rise. So straight away, Rise is picked up by Snake, making the most of the fact that Champion Pool has been pinched. This does leave open the two picks now for Zoom and Zhaohan to lock in their team's most preferred champions. What exactly they will take? Well, certainly we're gonna see the Varus, which was played in game one by Crystal so effectively. And in game two, picked in game three, and RD gets his hands on it. And I really love Virus right here. Pretty powerful as a pick. One of the best ones against Rise too. Uh, as his uh, a self peeling uh, ADC, he has the capacity to stop the warp gate uh, with a good chain of corruption. And of course, right here, uh, Skarner really makes a lot of sense since he is one of the most punishing junglers against uh, Virus. It makes sense to lock him here, make sure he's not on the team of Snake and not a threat to worry about when you're Varus. Yeah, completely makes sense. And also makes sense for Zhao Han, who went 2-0-10 in the last game with his Predator Skana, doing fantastic work for the side of JDG. If it works, you don't change it. Simple as that. Absolutely. The next lock-in is Tarm Kench. It worked in the first game for Snake Esports. Hoodie with that fantastic score line got banned out in the second, but hoodie has got his hands back on the toad in the third game as Sejuani becomes their final lock-in of this stage of the picks. Tam Kens is the best possible solution right here for a couple of reasons. First of all, it can both negate the chain of corruption and the appeal of uh, Varus and Skarner individually. And on top of that, if you don't really get it, just to counter those uh, spells and the aggression and the early crowd control that JDG can apply, then you're risking seeing it as a third pick for JDG. If that happens, um, there's nothing you can do about that. Varus is going to have the safest of laning faces and really just picking Brom against this is not going to help because Brom wow. is really not having the best win rates against the Skarna. So five mid lane bans had happened in the first phase of the ban. We've just had another ban coming out of, or of Snake for Oriana. That's four mid laners banned by Snake Esports and suddenly Yagao's champion pool is getting pinched massively. We might even see all five bans going towards the mid laners from Snake. Yeah, that, that makes absolute sense right here as Rise really wants those uh, target bans to make sure his lane phase will be easy. Right here, Cassiopeia makes a lot of sense since he will be applying lots of damage to the front lane. They opt with the Gnar instead since Gangplank is already banned out um, and Gnar is really only paired up against Gangplank in terms of equal matchup. They really want to make sure it doesn't get first picked and by taking it out, they leave Cassiopeia open. They leave Cassiopeia open, but currently we're seeing the Karma Hover. I'm sad not to see all five bands from Snake being towards the mid lane. That would have been pretty cool. But it's going to be the Karma Exodia locked object. in. And Yagao is going to get himself a slightly more supportive mid laner this game. Karma is really not the kind of uh, mid lane that has been appreciated lately. Like, she is being thought as a second support, she just sealed the ADC, but it's really not like that. She offers with great wave clear, uh, permanent shoving into the lane, uh, pretty much negating roamers such as Talia or Ryze. And while that happens, he also has the capacity to pretty much boost up Skarner into very easy engages, which should not be underestimated. RD decided to harass the um, harass Crystal in the last game on that Cogmore. Caitlyn picked up by Crystal this time, hoping that she can harass RD's Varus. Oh, how the tables have turned, but luckily enough for JDG, Varus is one of the ADCs that does uh, significantly well against the Kate. Uh, if he gets a Doran's Hill start, Possibly even a Ninja Tabi, um, he will be having absolutely no problem. But again, Varus is one of those champions that can actually trade fairly easily from good range. Right here, it's the Orn I want to be talking about. Because right here against the Shen, you would expect some strong split pusher that makes the best out of the lack of power, the top side of the jungle and the top side of the map. It's a bot side of the map that Snake will be pressuring with those global objectives with the global spells, the warp gate, the stun united, and having a top laner that cannot really punish that 
is a questionable decision by JDG. There's definitely less pressure on the Shen, but I'm excited for the Orn pick purely for the amount of engage both teams have. So much crowd control going to come out of both teams. The draft is completed. The teams are getting themselves hyped up. And we're going to be moving on to the Rift for Game 3. There it is. The Game Decider coming right off. JDG, will they be locking that 50% win rate and taking this precious win against Snake? Or are we going to see Snake just raining on the West group, just grabbing that first place on the Western standings? The side of JDG certainly look a lot more comfortable going into this game than they did in the last one though, Bliss. Uh, maybe a few less nerves having picked up that first win. And it's actually Snake who now have the pressure on themselves to pick up this series win. I'm really looking forward to this game. There has been the same mistake we saw by Snake in the previous game. They banned a lot of mid laners and they didn't get good results off it. Because they banned three mid laners in the previous game, five uh, all, all in all, and the other first pick was more than enough to ruin Snake's win rate and make the series a tie. So let's see. Are we gonna see Snake? take the series 2 and 1 or JDG are coming back there are the cheers from the LPL crowd there are three members of JDG strong going towards the red side jungle of SS gonna spot each other out pretty early on though Blandra just taking control of the tribus JD actually applying pressure just to go for that red buff war. This is gonna give a lot of information. They're gonna know where Sejuani starts, but already we do see some shrines getting contested very deep in the jungle of JD. Yeah, JD do lose that shrine early on. Uh, they, however, do manage to pick one up around the area of the dragon. And it's going to uh, also be JDG picking up the extra gold for taking that shrine back in their own jungle early on. Speaking of extra gold, Flandre's gone for the kleptomancy on Shen. Yeah, I was about to say that. Like, we never see that. Flandre going for the kleptomancy uh, against Orn. That makes Ooh. us believe that they're not going to be doing much except for farming. Oh, it's invade 3 on 3. Here we go. Hoodie so is going to get stunned. He has to flash early on. It's going to be a flash lost on the Tom Kench. It's going to be a little bit of extra damage going down onto Sejuani, taking all the extra poke from the red buff. Uh, it's a successful invade all in all from the three men of JDG. And S of M had the luxury of keeping his smite right here since uh, Xiao Han was not really uh, a participant of that invade. Uh, he has been left a little bit uh, behind right here since... Uh, he took a little bit too much to clear those comps, but most importantly, Hootie is sitting without a flash on bot side, and Xiao Han started on top side, so we might be seeing some level 3 uh, advantage and aggression on bot side, trying to punish the lack of flash. I hope so. Hootie. I want to see some big plays coming out of those players. One thing to note is that we have got the unsealed spellbook on six members of, of this game. We've got it on both mid laners, ADCs and supports for both teams. As we see Skana waiting in the wings, hoping for a gank. Here comes Zhao Han. He's stepping in. He's looking for maybe this crystalline blow. Going and it's going to be a devour from Hoodie immediately saving Crystal. And it was Hoodie who was flashless. So Crystal was always pretty safe in that situation. That's definitely not the correct target uh, on the bot side of the map because he has his flash, the Devourer is up, so uh, there's definitely nothing you can take of that. And showing up your, yourself on the bot side of the map really signals S of M to go for a free steal on the cracks. Right here, this is completely unpunished and predictable too. JD probably know right now that Sejuani is right on their cracks. He's capitalizing on that. Yeah, nice, clever jungling coming out of Zhao Han. Both junglers there making the most of the situation. We've seen the early recall coming out of Sejuan instead of the early gank. Getting that tracker's knife. Obviously not going to be able to pick up that item for very much longer though, Bless. Yeah, he's going to steal the shrine on the bot side. And the blue buff is still up. So Zhao Han will be 
running towards there. He's getting a lot of regeneration from his own shrines too. So that should be it. After that blue buff, we should be seeing a really quick recall and really nice stats so he can actually sustain through level 4, 5 and probably 6 into a gank without another recall. So I said during champ select how excited I was oh. by... Oh, wow. We'll come back to that because SFM might be about to spot Zhao Han. He's going to lose his blue buff and he's going to spot Zhao Han out. He's going to cancel the recall. It's actually SFM who was looking for an invade onto the blue buff. So he doesn't steal uh, He doesn't steal away from Zhao Han. Zhao Han secures that one and then recalls. He has been losing in terms of experience, though. He has been one level back and Xiao Han is really into a game where he needs to rush that level 6 to go for the, impen for the impaled ganks. And so is SOVM. As long as he does that, he should really have good chances onto mid lane where we do see no cleanse. If he allows Yago to go back and take that cleanse, then Sejuani will not be able to either gank Zoom, neither Yago, maybe probably just LV Mara and RD. And that is the joy of the unsealed spellbook. So many potential changes. As casters, we've got to keep on top of who's got what and when they've got it. As players, it's that much harder though. You've got so much already going on in this high pressure situation. To have to think about all different summoner spells that could come out, that's not an easy task. Definitely not an easy task. Zoom, just suffering through the Tiamat rush of Landre. Um, I'm pretty sure that with uh, the Relic Sealed and the Tiamat, he has enough stats to sustain through lane and actually outfarm him just because of the extra gold generation. With the Kleptomancy, with the Relic Sealed, he should be very happy about that. And a safe top lane without much action is exactly what uh, a Shen needs as a champion. Yeah, we're seeing quite a lot of these Relic Shield rushes. Um, so it's probably seen quite so early from a top laner who's not going to be able to proc those stacks against uh, having not, uh, with not having any compadres around. But Flandre seems happy enough to get that early item and will be getting the passive gold generation, getting himself towards an extra bit of vision for his team very shortly. And Xiao Han will be hitting that level 6 soon. He opts to recall before that. Ooh. Having just the Tracker's Knife is enough. Flandre is Call so the, low. Call of the Forge God does not get blasted back into Flandre's face and you have to wonder if he would have at the very least have had to burn a flash had that knock-up landed. So, yeah. I think he tried to go for the flash prediction and that backfired because in the end he got neither the kill nor the flash burn. But... That, that's what's happening when you get greedy right here. You're not going to get neither the flash nor that, that kill. So Flandre is still going to have a lot of global pressure because after the stand United, he has the capacity to taunt flash. If he took that flash, bot lane will be feeling so much better playing aggressive and trying to contest the advantages they could possibly get. Guo Guo is stepping up the river. He's going to find a control ward and he's not going to find an Orn just yet. Zoom is going to be stepping back under his turret, going to be safely farming up on this Orn. I have to give a shout out to Flandre though. Fantastically calm presence of mind in that situation to not go down to Zoom or, the, or even to lose his flash. I'm actually a little bit interested in why Guo Guo just showed up on top lane. Uh, Obviously, he went there to help Flander Shove and get him a free recall. Because when you're playing against Orn, that's really the punishment. Overstaying on your lane and getting out itemed, basically, since he can uh, stop from base, uh, from lane, is really your punishment. So that makes sense. It does, but he lost a lot of pressure on the mid lane. He had the priority, he had a good CS advantage that got diminished by a little bit. And on the same note, they did spot a control ward that is still not destroyed. Yeah, they did. It's um, it's obviously just Rise wanting to get himself back to mid lane as quickly as possible, not stopping for those four auto attacks. On the plus side for the Rise, however, he has got the tier and the catalyst already. Got himself that 20 CS uh, lead that you were talking about there, Alex. And actually, for the early game, Rise to be doing this well against the Karma speaks pretty highly of Gogo. Gogo with the tier and the, the catalyst. I think there's nothing that can stop him from safe scaling. We have seen the Karma mid uh, for the second time, I think, now. Uh, they also played Eye of the Watchers the previous time we watched that. And right here, just 
take a look like the last time that happened we saw a useless karma that had absolutely nothing to do with a free scaling rise and it looks like this is gonna be the case again because there's absolutely no pressure onto him the stopwatch is there and Chao Han with that predator impale he needs to use it now or we're gonna see safe scaling by Guogo we are, we've got ourselves a 600 gold lead for uh, SS at the moment. JDG behind in the top lane and the mid lane, both of those lanes about 300 gold behind, which is why we're seeing this discrepancy. Um, we're going to see a potential smite here coming out of SM trying to steal trying the drugs away. It. He manages to take a little one, but the uh, the big chunk of the gold goes into Shaohan's pocket. Nice block from El Vimao. So Bliss, go. Is... You go yeah. for it. Okay, so uh, I was about to say how uh, Braum is one of those champions that can both negate the shove of a Caitlyn, but also negate her poke onto the tower by simply sealing those hotch. So, um, right here we shouldn't expect Caitlyn to work exactly as before. She shouldn't be able to get some tower damage and play around those tower first blood objective. And if that is happening for the team of Snake, then it means they're simply going into scaling and waiting for a fight to use that stun United. If that doesn't happen, we're talking free scaling into late game. Yeah, and as we get into that late game, I was getting really excited when the unlocked in during Champ Select Bliss because there is just so much crowd control. You've got yourself a Call of the Forge God, you've got Impale, you've got a Skarna Stun, you've got a Binding coming out of Karma, you've got Chains of Corruption, you've got a Glacial Prison, a Glacial Fissure, Taunt coming out of Shen, a um, Runic Prison, and a Tarm Kenj Abyssal Voyage just for a bit of extra mobility as well. There's so much playmaking potential, and even though we're zero kills at the 11 minute mark, this game has the absolute possibility to explode, and I can't wait for that to happen. 500 gold uh, as a lead for Snake is really nothing, but when you take a quick look at the vision, just take a quick look at the map, you can see that the it's all shrines snake. are all blue. The vision are all blue, and JDG really are not utilizing that level 6 Predator Flashing Pale that they have available for so much. Like, what are they going to do? Where are they going to be able to do that? Because on bot lane, you definitely can go for Crystal, who has a Devour resting right by him. You can only go for Hoodie, which is, of course, pretty viable. But again, is he worth the Flash Predator being burned? And Hoodie's got a cleanse at this point. I mean, don't forget that Hoodie burned his Flash at minute one of this game, and nothing has been done to capitalize on that. That is true. And when you burn a singular Flash, like, you know you have to punish it to make sure that you gain the maximum advantage you can from uh, the events of the game but on the same note you become predictable they know you're gonna try and go for the flash burns so they are gonna be able to play around you with a double tp so that might have been the reason why jdz is not approaching that bot lane aggression since it has been two versus two even and we don't really see crystal getting any advantage of rd Speaking of the advantages around the game, both teams seem happy to play this slower, macro, scaling game at the moment. And which team do you feel this is really playing more into the hands of? Uh, definitely JDG, because uh, first of all, they're supposed to lose the bot lane right here. If we never see a stun United, if we never see a team fight on bot and they keep in two versus two, VAR seems to be having a free scaling into mid game with nothing to worry about, which of course is amazing for him. And the only thing JDG do not have in their favor is, of course, mid lane, where Ryze is gonna super outscale Karma. And Yaga knows that. Like, we have seen Karmas in the mid lane play with the Eye of the Watchers and try to go for vision control. But yet again, it's Snake who's winning that vision game. And if you're investing into a vision mid laner that plays on a supportive shoving role, and you're not shoving and you're not gaining vision control, then what are you doing? What are you doing indeed? A question that could possibly be asked of Zhao Han, who seems to be slightly lost in his own jungle. Taunt lands from Flandre. Zoom being taken lower by this tier matted Shen. The, the, currently, we do see that the ninja is having a little bit better time than the Forge God. There's the taunt again. Oh, Zoom is trying to get himself away, but this is a straight out 1v1 outplay from Flandre in the top lane. 
with a Klepto too, like Grass from the Undying is not helping you now. Flandre just going in, taking what's his, winning those trades like he's a split pusher. And you know what? We never counted him as a split pusher, but with a Titanic Hydra, he could opt to do that. Like, it's not the build we do see normally, oh, but it's definitely yeah, not Yago, you're on top of a ward. A step into the bush would have revealed the fact that there was that control ward. Oh, no. <coughs> there are some good minutes for him to get. I don't think he knew it was there. I'm going to be perfectly honest, Alex. Really? I think he actually was not willing to lose the tempo of the game. Like, he tipped it back. He got the wave. He lost no minions. And now he's going to go clear it because he obviously saw it. But, yeah. Like, he... Lost Rift Hero as a result. As a result of that, it's in the end is possibly what can break this stalemate of free farming into the mid game. If the mid lane tower is lost for a vision mage, I'm not really sure what he can do. Once. That completely splits the map in two. Once more, Bliss, I must bow to your superior macro knowledge. You're absolutely right. We saw the Karma after clearing the wave immediately going to clear out the ward that she knew she'd recalled on top of. The Herald, however, going into the pockets of the Snake team. They're going to be happy to get that one. It might just be the thing they need to break the first turret. It surely is an easy grab of the first tower. Like, um, if I had to think of a lane that has absolutely no chance of defending it, that would definitely be top lane. Uh, Zoom is having trouble dealing with the one versus one already. In two versus one scenario, there's a lot of crowd control and some fair enough of burst to actually threaten Zoom's life. And he has absolutely no way of clear to deal with the Rift Herald. So uh, using it on top lane should be uh, first tower of the game. You could well but be again, right. What do you make of? Tower. Sorry. What do you make of Zoom's decision to rush the Abyssal Mask and get himself Merc Tread straight after? Only just now picking up that Glacial Shroud. Um, you know what? That's that's definitely something we have been used to seeing. It's something that favors top laners in general, no matter the matchup. So it's kind of the easy option, the one you don't have to think too much about. But, for example, you're playing versus Caitlyn and your lane opponent has already Tiamat, so Ninja Tabi would be better and you only have to worry about Ryze. I'm, I'm, I'm sure you could get the Abyssal, Adaptive and Ninja Tabi and still be very tanky uh, as you will be decreasing both the auto attack damage and the Ryze constant uh, damage output. But the Abyssal Rush hasn't been punishing too much. Like, sure, he's losing the trades, but... The CS is fair. He hasn't lost tower. It's it's fair for him. It's good. Shelly's eye has been crushed. She has been summoned. She has charged into the mid lane and put a decent bit Red of damage down. Up. We're going to have 2v2 in the mid lane as the junglers have joined the party. The, the turret going lower and lower. Shelly trying to get one final smash down. down. No. But thus hit into the eye from Shaoshan well, we'll will part. mean that we don't see first turret blood just yet. But that's not going to stop S of M and also Guo Guo pushing down this turret any further. Nice oh, defense coming out from Yago though. Really clever list by Xiao Han. He's pulling the CS away from tower range so they don't get tower aggro. So that way, the team of Snake has not the ability to actually uh, apply auto attacks onto that tower. If they do, they do get tower aggro and of course they get severely punished. So right here, they return into normal one versus one on the lane and you just see how Gogo is actually out solving uh yago in this matchup so yeah i'm not really sure what karma is putting in the table in this point of the match well she's brought herself that chalice so is going to so the she's now completed into um the unholy grail so she has got herself that going to be able to capitalize on any shielding that she puts out however with skana no longer in the mid lane she does lose out the first turret uh, gives over the first turret blood to the side of Snake Esports. Flandre just wants to keep fighting Zoom. Right now he's clearing out vision and he's not even slightly scared of the Forge God. What I would be scared about, like not scared, just have my mind on, is the fact that right now the top laners of both GDG and Snake are sitting on the same CS, they have the same lane pressure, 
not the same global pressure, but the same lane pressure. And the sole difference between them is the gold advantage that Sen is gonna have because of Kleptomancy and the extra HP Zoom is gonna generate because of the Grasp of the Undying. So if that gold actually uh, surpasses in HP value the one that the Grasp of the Undying is giving Zoom, then that's the best they can get in terms of laning phase. And right now, Flander, I think he's not doing too good of a job of that. I think Grasp on the Undying has been proccing freely for Zoom. Yet, when you have that global control with the stand United, you know you're gonna be more valuable in general as long as you're able to cancel the TP. We've finally seen a change of corruption here in the bot lane. We're gonna see the Devour coming out of Tom Kench and Crystal with three stacks of Braum concussive blows on top of him. Not gonna feel the Winter's Bite just yet. However, the turret is going to feel a little bit of pain. Meanwhile, in the top lane, here comes the Call of the Forge God. Taunt misses. Die. It's gonna be a knock-up onto Flandre. Zoom stepping forward, trying to get the knock-up. There it is. It's and good. we're gonna see Flash coming out of Flandre. The damage coming out of the Titanic Hydra is good, but not enough to take down either top laner. Uh, Here's Karma. United, he's trying to go away, and he is gonna go away. JDG just rotating towards topwards. It only saves their tower, but it also gets a stun United off Flandre. That basically equalizes the global control they were warring off. And right now, all they have to do is regain control of the Dragon Pit before it's gone. Once again, we say thank you to Declan for our wonderful vision that's just given us that graphic animation of Baron coming onto the rift. What does that mean for those two teams now that the big purple worm has made his presence known? I love the attempt from JDG to actually lane swap because the abyssal mask from the team of uh, JDG and Zoom is going to make him really good against uh, Ryze. But Gogo right here doesn't really want that lane swap because if we see Yaga staying on top side, he's gonna be able to completely outshow Flandre, who has absolutely no magic resistances uh, apart from uh, the Mercury Treads and the Aegis. So right here, he would be able to basically threaten his own tower. But when you have that Eye of the Watchers on top of you and you know you can't possibly get ganked but by S of M, you can't really uh, negate that from your own team. You can't deprive the luxury of your own team to apply second sidestone privileges on mid lane. Neither of these two teams seem to be fans of early dragons. Yet again, we have to wait very, very late in the game. 21 minutes and a mountain dragon falls. And in a few more minutes time, we'll see a second mountain drake re uh, respawning onto the rift. This has been one of the slowest and methodical games we have seen. It, it tends to happen in game threes since no one wants to really risk too much. Oh, Xiaohan got the blue. Worth. <laughs> Do you think that was intentional or was Yago trying to take that? Well, obviously, like the impale is going to be 10% faster <laughs> and it's the entire game condition of uh, JDG. They have to play around the impale. No, but no but, I, in but all seriousness, no, it wasn't intentional. Bliss, you, you can't have a cooldown if you never use the spell. Checkmate, Bliss. <laughs> I have absolutely nothing to say back to you, because that's actually so true. We have never seen Impel being used. We haven't seen uh, Glacial Prism being used as a result of uh, no cleanse. Oh, Crystal. Oh, oh, wow. We said Impale three times and it appeared and someone disappeared. It was Crystal. He's gone from the map. It's going to be RD picking up first blood. JDG take themselves a turret as well and keep pushing towards the inner turret. You don't expect since an explosive turn of events right there. Because right here they have been losing for two towers. Right now they're pushing S4. There's the Mantra Inspire. Flandre is dropping solo. Devour comes. He's not gonna go down. Devour comes in from Hoodie, and here's gonna be the teleport. Both top laners will be present in the bot lane. It's gonna be cancelled by Zoom because the turret has already been picked up by JDG. They take themselves two turrets. They equalize the turret score. They're still slightly behind on gold. We're now gonna see a teleport to coming in. This is Grow Go. Go me in. He's looking for the big delivery. We're going to see Hoodie with the Abyssal Voyage delivering his team. Here comes the Glacial Prison landing, and it's going to mean trouble for JDG. Stopwatch is being used, but down goes Zhao Han. Flash away from LV Mao. He's now safe under a turret. Or is he? No, he's not, because Flandry picks up one. Taunt lands onto RD, who burns the stopwatch. They're still fighting under a turret, and it just doesn't freaking matter, because Crystal picks up a kill. The Abyssal Voyage right on top of Yago's head. It's going to be a fourth kill in quick succession. 
for SS because we're gonna see Karma go down to Hoodie. Everything goes wrong for JDG. That's the most beautiful way to punish a TP cancellation right there. JDG was so much better. They had found the solution to actually come back from a shaky early game. And right there, he gets greedy. He uses a teleport just to get the free tower, but he also wants to stay in the mid lane for the free farm. And when he cancels that, and when snakes see that, they punish it as they know they have the numbers advantage. They go right through, they get four kills. Barred. The is secured it's as like, a result of the death timers. It's like Christmas came early for Snake. They don't lose any members, have the purple buff onto every single one of their team. Here comes the teleport from Crystal. Incredible plays. Flash in, bringing the stand United close to Flandre. Tom will come towards the brush, so it actually pulls Elvim out even further away from his teammates. All User, all used, all summoners right here, and Flandre is just zoning everyone. RD has nothing to do right there. It's gonna be a stopwatch, just delaying the inevitable. And in the end, nothing was enough to even help them from even surviving the Baron rush. Orn just, he managed to get himself down to the bot lane. He was walking around the river going, uh, where do I go? What's my place? What do I do? Massive, massive shout out to Crystal because I thought that was going to be um, Go Guo's um, teleport coming in. Well, he didn't even have teleport. It was actually his realm warp that delivered himself, Tom Kench and Shen into the enemy team. It was Crystal teleporting in using the unsealed spellbook that really finalized that that fight was going to go down well for Snake Esports. And right now, all hell breaks loose for the team of JDG. They have absolutely nothing to do with that Baron minion. Like, the Karma wave clear is obsolete against Baron buff, and Gogo is even tanking the Mantra Inner Flame that Yago is attempting to poke with. So, right here, the one versus one is completely one-sided for the team of Snake. And on the three versus three, that's where things get debatable. If the Stun United is up for Flandre, it's gonna be Snake who's gonna be the winner of that. But Zoom really needs to be there for team fights. This is the reason they picked Orn instead of a split pusher that's gonna punish him. It's for him to take advantage of the huge crowd control he can put through for the team of JDG. JDG must be feeling so sad right now. They managed to take themselves first blood, two turrets in the bot lane, perhaps a slight overstay, a misuse of summoner spells, and they now find themselves nearly 6,000 gold behind with a minute still left on this Baron buff. I have to give you the MVP of the fight to that uh, Realm Warp of Guogo. That was so big. What made us think that the Baron was won. With one Realm Warp, the Baron was actually won. Because right there, JDG had disengaged. They were far away, they had their towers, they were happy about that. And the sole reason they got caught up and actually died in a 4 versus 4 dive without minions is the fact that Realm Warp was able to gap close that distance. Bliss, I love the LPL. We get 23 minutes of beautifully stalled out gameplay, neither team taking a risk, and then suddenly we get five kills in less than two minutes, and the game takes off in a massive way. Second Mountain Dragon is about to spawn, as we see in Guoguo. He's pushing down this, in t uh, this inner turret in the bot lane, gonna get it free of charge. We should also know that Gogo is actually uh, opting to buy that uh, elixir of sorcery that gives you tremendous burst onto towers when you're AP mage. So uh, right here, Gogo just cleans up that tier 12 bot side very, very easily alone. They're going to do the same with mid lane with extreme ease too. And right here, instead of going for the tier 2 on top lane, they go for the mountain drake, which of course is going to top on top of that first one, uh, Flandre is going to get caught. Predator prop by Zhao Han. He gets the impale onto Flandre. Does Flandre have any way of getting out of here? Call of the Forge God lands so the Winter's Bite. But there's the Devour from Hoodie. The flash away. Spitting his top lane into safety. Godlike plays from Tarn Kench. It's that simple. It's it's godlike results, but it was yeah. just the Devour and moving back. The flash was used too, but with a sealed spellbook and sat rare amounts of action you don't even care like team fights happen twice in an hour right here
you don't really care, you get the free Mountain Drake even if Flandre ends up dead, which he didn't, you could still come on top of that. You're right, Bliss. I might have gotten a little bit strong with Godlike, but we've got to give him at least Demi Godlike for his performance in game one and how the solidly he's playing now. Because a lot of summoners, uh, a lot of cooldowns were actually used there. Chain of Corruption, Glacial Fissure, Impale, you name it, everything was used into a kill for Flandre and he actually survived with a simple Devourer. That's too much in my books. That is godlike result. Yeah, it certainly isn't. Uh, a Herculean effort coming in from Hoodie, taking away summoner spells and ultimates from JDG. Flandre lives, preserving his 2-0-1 scoreline. The Baron buff has now elapsed for Snake Esports. What are we going to see them doing over the next few minutes? Uh, you know what? We were sure that this 2 versus 2 stalemate on both side is going to favor RD, and it did. Because right here he has scaled safely. Uh, red buff gets stolen? No. no. It actually is secured by JDG. Oh, he misses. Wow. That the was call the call of the Forge God. They yeah. need to disengage right here. Glacial Prison immediately stopping Zoom in his tracks. Flandre, however, is not being stopped in his tracks anytime soon. And the Snake Esports train is running amok through the base of JDG. They're trying to deal with Flandre. Here come the Chains of Corruption. No Tom Kench nearby this time. The route is going to land from Yago. It looks like Flandre is opting in for the fight. Meanwhile, we're going to see SS pushing in the top lane. Flandre will drop. But will we see the final outer turret fall? I think so. In a turret. I think we will. That is compensation for the tower lost on both sides, but with double mountain and third one on the way, you cannot really leave the team of Snake unmarked. You cannot really let them get free damage onto the towers. Right here, you're left with zero tier twos. You know a Baron's on the way, and the split piece of Flandre with Titanic Handra and Bana is not going to be stalled by Zoom. You don't have an answer to that. So. Chasing kills is making it even worse for you. Right here, the only chance of JDD is playing 5 versus 5 fights and actually winning and using the strengths of Orn exactly like they're supposed to be played. Nearly 9,000 the gold lead now and things looking dire for JDG as they look to even their win-loss ratio out at 5 to 5. Here we see the Rise who has a 30, uh, sorry, a 64 CS advantage over the Karma in mid lane. He's just able to step up to whoever he wants to. He's sitting on three items, make the three and point eight <laughs> with the needlessly in the stopwatch. Stopwatch, of course, still available. That makes it so much worse. Desperation for Baron. It's. I'm not sure if it's desperation, but 50-50 is definitely very good chances. He's actually baiting. There's the call of the Force God. It gets no one? No, I think it was it was channeled towards Guo Guo, but he either sidestepped it or was too far away with the knockup. It is going to mean the reinitiate on the Baron. This is dangerous, dangerous place coming in now. for the side of JDG. They're looking to make a play happen. It might not be desperation, but it's getting pretty close right now. They're taking damage from the Baron, spitting out so that I'm Venom. And we're going to see JDG have to back away from this one. SS are going to be able to clear out any vision they want. Flandre looking for a potential taunt. Predator? But not going to find it. It could be a potential Brenda, but he's got no team backing him up right now. And Ryze is happily pushing that wave in mid. That's the the deficiency of being too fast. Like, no one's out trying you. Not even your teammates can follow up your own calls. Right here, the team of Snake know that without the call of the Forge Good, they can force a fight and possibly win, even if they lose the Baron. So they're going for it. Oh! Is he flashes in. It, he loses it. It's not enough, and it's going to mean that Skana gets dropped really, really low. Oh, call yeah. of the Forge God manages to get multiple knockups. Everybody's going that pretty low. Yago doing work outside the pit. RD manages to take down it's SMM. Good. Now we're going to see the, the ADC of SS turning around. Crystal landing good damage. Flash forward oh, from yeah. Guo Guo. He's getting more and more damage down. Oh, low health oh, target oh, members oh. everywhere. JDG are dropped. Big like flies, Caitlyn with one kill, Rise with another, the Realm Warp channeled, Yago going lower and lower, everything taken away from JDG, it was a daylight robbery and they've been mugged up everything but their dignity. All that was done with the back of a teleport from Flandreau topside, he gets the form on top, instantly TPs of both and look at that Chad Banner Baron Minion, he's going in there, he's just bruising through those stars just look at the stars this they is have no hp that's completely gone that is snake 
finalizing the 2-1 against JDG. Game 3 goes over to Snake Esports. They climb to 8-2 and two in the standings. A clear game above EDG in Group A. JDG drop to 4-6 and six and will have to look to try and get more wins later this week if they are to push themselves further ahead of LGD and not fall behind Sooning. Greyheart, like JDG had an honorable presence in this best of three. They played against Snake, they're the best in their group and they made it so good looking. They had a beautiful game to win. Game three was done very well in macro. One mistake, one cancelled teleport was enough for Snake, for Snake to snowball through the team fight, get four kills, translate it into a Baron buff. And after that, there was nothing JGZ could do. It was absolutely beautiful by Snake, capitalizing on those mistakes, earning that hard win. Congratulations to Snake Esports. They take the bow, they sliver their way even further up the table. They certainly proved to be on a slippery slope. That's it for game three. That's it for the series. And we will bring you more very soon.